Okay, welcome. So that is the first, in a way, of the freeform video. And today we are going to review two pull requests that I merge into the Rust web app blueprint. So you can find the Rust web app blueprint on Rust 10x Rust web app. And this is a two pull request that I merge. This one shows that not merged, but I merged a commit, but not the PR, so that's why it shows off. But the thing has been merged. And they have been both made by Vamzi. So big thanks. And things I wanted to do, but Vamzi beats me to it. So that's awesome. So the first one here is going to be splitting the libRPC to libRPC core and RPC app. This is very cool to be able to scale the web app. And then the second one, same principle here, is split the web server into a libweb. So keep the web server, but splitting some of it into a libweb. We're going to see why. So if we go back to our code here, this is the architecture that we have. We have this thing over there, which is our libraries. And that is the libraries that we're going to use for our services. So those, if we saw them in the chart, those are those guys. Yeah, so we have our host, our core, our RPC, and our utils. Now, we have our services, which is for now, we have one web server. And so that makes our two kind of stack in a way. Libraries on the bottom here, over there. And then our services on top. So if we go to services, and we have our web server over there. Now, this approach scale well. However, one of the issues in this particular code design at this stage is that the libRPC has everything, has the helpers to build RPCs, but also has all of the RPCs of the web server. So the problem of that is that eventually, when we mature the application, we're going to do multi-services, which is a goal. And once we're going to have another service, for example, an IT server, which usually when you are going to mature a SaaS application, you are going to have an IT server at some point because you have the web server for your uh, web, mobile, and even API backend. That could be one in a way. Sometimes people make multiple, but one is okay. And then you do want to have a server specific to your DevOps. It's much more restriction constrained at the IP base level, but as well, you don't want the code to bleed on the web server because first, it has a different life cycle probably update a lot in spikes, and then it will stay flat for a while. And then also, you don't want code to be somewhere on the web server, even if it's not used, even if you have the right authorization. If there is no code, there is no path. Yeah, so it's always good for security to be have multi-layer security in a way. So that is something that eventually we're going to do that, and there's going to be also kind of a multi-service where we're going to have more kind of uh, backend services like job services that will also reuse some of these modules or this library. That is a goal. A backend service, a job service, won't re really reuse the libRPC, but um, they could, but typically they are more event based in the architectures that I go with. But regardless, we are going to need to reuse this RPC in multiple services. And we don't want the services to share all of their RPC handlers in a way. So that is a problematic. So one way of doing it is now we are going to take the RPC, we are going to do the RPC core, and we are going to create another one, which is going to be an RPC app. And this way, the web server can reuse the RPC app. Now, there could be two ways. Yeah, We could have said, well, the RPC app is only for web servers. So in this case, you don't do it in a lib. You will put it there. And in fact, IT server will have some RPCs that probably doesn't need to be in a lib, just for it. And here, the argument will be to say, well, the RPC app, RPC handlers, uh, is something that could be used by the web server, but by the IT server as well. They said that the IT client, whatever it is, want to access some of the basic agent conversation and so on. That might be uh, possible as well. And then in this case, it will go through the IT server. And then the IT server will have its own um, RPC handlers. And so that will work pretty well. 
So that was the first commit. And in fact, if show height merge now, this is what we have. We have the lib RPC app, lib RPC core. And then in the core, we have only the core staff, the support things in a way, the utils. So RPC param and result and error and the prelude. So in this particular case, usually I don't like prelude anymore. But in this particular case, Prelude was very fitting. I'm going to explain why. And then in the utils, we just have macro utils. And now the reason why Prelude is important or is useful is because every time we do our handlers, we are going to have to import all of this boilerplate. Yeah, the context, the things, the model manager and stuff, and, and this one. And if you don't, the error is a little bit tricky to find. And so it's get annoying. So usually I do one handler and I have this boilerplate uh, import that I know that I'm going to need it. And then I put it in a prelude. And then this way, when I've developed the handlers, so now we go to the lib RPC app and I am on the agent RPC. Now, if I go there, I have, um, I don't know why I have a fine. I have to use libRPC prelude and then the uh, just my business object, agent and so on. And then I can reuse all of these macros and everything and I have router builder and that basically create the router builder from the router, RPC router library that I'm also the author of. And then this one will create the CRUD RPCs in a way for a given agent BMC, which is kind of a controller. And then those are the different types for the different actions. And so that will create the CRUD. Now, the cool thing is with all of this, we'll create the whole CRUD RPC on JSON RPC style. And then if I go to conv here, I do the same thing. Yes, I'm going to include the prelude, have my business objects, just the one I want. And then I have this guy as well. And here I build the basic CRUD. But here's a trick. The cool stuff is I can have my own custom handler. And here I put a handler. And it's like Axum. It's, it's inject stuff and so on. And then I just added it there at this place. So it works pretty well here. So all of that is very cool because it allows me to streamline my code and to cherry pick what we have. Um, this one, I just had it, but I did not expose it yet, but I can add it. And so that was a pretty cool pull request because now I can have this one, the lib RPC app can be reused, on this one, on this one. And then I can have the same thing inside my service IT server, and that will work fine. And that will allow the code here to scale to a multi-service uh, pretty well. OK, so that is this pull request. Now, if we go to the second one, and it's going to be about internal architecture over there, and that, and it's the same kind of philosophy, is, well, there's going to be logic here on our web server, set our source here, we have log and we have web and we have a lot of things here that are obviously common for any type of web server we want to do. And so the trick is to say, if we want to do another web server, well, we're going to need, or it would be nice to have a library that take care of the common part. The reason why I didn't do it at the beginning is because that was part of the direction, but because I had only one web server, I didn't want to too much preemptively split things in a way. Now that this blueprint is being used in production by some, then uh, people are obviously feel the needs of doing that. And by following the philosophy of the, the blueprint, they're doing pull requests that goes exactly in the same direction here that I wanted. And they chat with me also on the Discord and stuff. So that is really awesome. And so what Vamzi did here is the next step, which is basically block away the common part of this one. And now we're going to create a libweb 
and that will be able to be reused by lib by our web server and by our RT server. So that is going to be a big win-win here for everything because now we can add multiple web servers. Now, in the architecture that we've been using for many years is we don't have too many web servers because even the backend one, they are more event-based, so they are taking their job from a queue rather than ping-ponging each other. However, you often have, have front-facing services, and those guys typically are web services over HTTP and so on. So that is a very, very good library to have. So if I go, go to where we are today. Now, that is what we have. We have now the lib web over here, which is this one. And then we have our services over there. Now, web server, we don't have the IT server, yeah? But now this one is becoming much simpler because it's going to reuse many of the things that are in the lib web. Now, what goes where and so on, that can be changed over time. Um, on this one, there's the handlers for login, for example, that makes sense. The handler for the RPC, that makes sense because those are the common one. Now it's probably taking some configuration in the argument, such as we can pass what we want, specific to our web server or IT server. Again, the endpoint here will be different a little bit than this one. Might have the same kind of for, for some of the RPC, and then the other one will be additive. Way. And everything is well supported here. And so again, what you put in one or the other will move over time. There's no absolute truth. In fact, there is a theme that is going to come back on this YouTube channel now that I have this small freeform way is I don't believe in truth. I believe in proximity. So it's a whole proximity game. There's no absolute truth. There's no dogma. There's no universal hammer. It's all about making the best architecture we can with our experience and awesome technologies. And there's a lot of awesome technologies. And then mature them over time and learn where we fail to make sure we don't repeat the same type of mistakes. That's it. So again, this is a very good direction here, and it's awesome that Vamzi did that. And um, I think with that, that will probably conclude this episode. So hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you like the new format. A little bit less edited, less scripted in a way, but hopefully good information. Until next one, happy coding.